Well, despite constant changes, Tifu has remained one of the most consistent players throughout competitive Fortnite's history. And even as new stars rise, Tifu has held on to his position as one of the best players in the world, dating back to his breakout performance in Friday Fortnite. And his results in World Cup, well, they've only solidified his top spot. Coming in first place, I mean, think about this, week three of the qualifiers and then fifth in week seven, Tifu has proven his ability to dominate in major Fortnite tournaments. Tifu may not be, you know, the flashiest or fastest player, but you know what? We're gonna take a look at his qualities that he possesses that make him such a top contender week after week. And when it comes to accuracy and smart positioning, I mean, you can check out our guys on ProGuys.com if you wanna win some battle royales yourself. What up, what up, guys? This is Keith Allen with Pro Guys, and today we are back with another Fortnite Pro Analysis video. And in this video, we're going to discuss Tifu's positioning, his rotations, early game fights, and high ground control in Week 7 of the World Cup Qualifier. Now, before we get into the gameplay, let us know in the comments section who you would like to see next. All right, well, jumping into our first game, Tifu has very strong weapons, but he acknowledges that he has no mobility going into late game. Because of this, he decides to take a fight against a player in a ball. Tifu knows that in general, players that are in ballers are trying to avoid all fights. He knows that an opponent that doesn't have confidence in fighting is an easy kill. After breaking the ball, Tifu lands a headshot and a body shot to remove all the player's shield and 30 of their health. He proceeds to clean up the elimination, resulting in a launch pad, which will greatly help him rotate in the later circles. One thing that's true is Tifu is very strong with his choosing his fights based off the weapons he has. The gold scar in this situation allows him to quickly break the ball and engage in a mid-game fight as a significant health advantage. Now, as the mid-game comes to an end in match number six for Tifu, you will see him move towards the center of the third circle. He does this because when the third circle closes, it always moves towards the center, guaranteeing him the fourth zone. Now, because of his center zone positioning, he is now able to hold people who are on the edge of zone. Often, the players who are positioned on the edge of the storm in their early circles have had to travel further, meaning they have less loot and lower health and shields. Now, one strategy that you'll see Tifu utilize often in both solos and duos is carrying glider redeploy to build a large one by one after third zone closes. He does this because he has no risk of fall damage despite tarping at a height that would inflict large amounts of fall damage. Comboing his great AR aim with a high ground position allows Tifu to find many rotate kills leading into the later zones. Once he notices an enemy that has their back to the zone, he puts pressure on them by spamming his AR. This forces his opponent to move towards him while trying to build and dodge his shots. This is a low risk way of finding free eliminations without putting himself in danger. Here, Tifu shows how glider redeploy can be used to save materials in a short rotate situation. Gliders can be an extremely strong movement tool if used lower to the ground and on short flights. Gliding too high and for far distances can be very risky due to the slower gliding speed. In this scenario, Tifu sees a safe path that he can follow to get himself on the edge of zone without spinning any materials on his rotate without losing any shield. Tifu lands as far up the hill as he can after his launch pad because he knows the zone will continue to move up the mountain. Landing up top allows him to get a head start on moving up the hill and avoiding possible bock fights on edge of storm. Despite being in zone while fighting off multiple enemies, Tifu remains calm. He has time with his aim to ensure strong shotgun shots. After he has established low ground for himself, he holds the left side of the zone because he knows nobody else will be coming from his left side. This allowed him to save materials by only converting his right side, leaving enough mass to get off low ground and play mid ground. I'm, getting, I'm dead. I'm literally dead. Oh my god, I just got griefed by a baller, dude. Holy f nice. I got it.
When Tifa was low on mats, he will rotate early with glider redeploy to build a one by one, looking for eliminations on players that are passing him. In this case, his early rotations towards edge of zone allowed him to see a rip when he glanced back, which means he needs to force into a player and kill them for materials. He decides to start shooting ballers because it's more likely that players that are in ballers have a high material count. Instead of building an entire one by one, Tifa will build and floor and crouch into a cone. This provides protection from every angle while saving 40 materials. When Tifa was completely out of materials, you know, he will often sit right on the edge of zone, since it's harder to see him while he's in the storm. To be real, most of the time, players won't be looking into the storm during late game, and it can also give them an opportunity to find an elimination on an unexpected opponent. In the next game, Tifu plays an entirely different position. This guy, Tifu, does just that by using unorthodox rotation methods and still finding himself controlling high ground late game. At the beginning of his third game, Tifu continuously farms as he rotates around the block. He does that while keeping an eye on the boat to make sure his opponent has pushed towards him. This allows him to keep high ground in case the enemy decides to start ramp pushing him. Because of all the farming Tifu has just done, by the time he starts getting pushed, he already has 700 materials to work with. His high material count allows him to use multiple floors and cones to block the enemy from taking high ground. At this point in the fight, he hears his opponent use a shadow bomb. This indicates to Tifu that either the enemy is going to try to use it to jump over top of him to take high ground, or he's using it to drop down to avoid taking fall damage. After he establishes that his opponent isn't going for high ground take, he begins to drop and look for angles. Tifu knows his opponent has her pickaxe out. Finding a good angle allows Tifu to hit two shotgun shots for 110 damage, swinging the fight in his favor. At this point, <laughs> Tifu aggresses and follows the sound of the shadow bomb to track them down and finish the kill. Bro, what the f Dude, how many does this guy have? What the f is going on? Due to Tifu's lack of mobility in the mid game, he then uses the quad crasher again to make the short rotate to fourth circle, which allows him to save materials and get better positioning. Yet again, for the fifth circle rotate, he utilizes the quad crasher, putting himself safely in the zone. Due to the early rotation, Tifu now has the ability to apply pressure into players moving and further away from zone. He begins to shoot walls of an opponent he knows is low, which doesn't result in a kill, but it does allow him to get 500 metal and 200 brick without taking any risk. At this point, Tifu needs to rotate use his shadow bombs. Shadow bombs are an extremely strong tool for movement due to the speed they grant and the invisibility. A shadow bomb will stay active as long as you stay off the ground after the six second duration. 
Tfue extends his time spent invisible by spamming jump, prolonging the 6 second duration. Immediately after exiting shadow form, he begins to build for height. He does this because he noticed on his rotate in shadow form that there was nobody on height tarping from the prior circle. Additionally, Tifu has another shadow bomb, which can be used to prevent fall damage in the event he gets knocked down. From this position on high ground, he has many opportunities to kill enemies that are tarping below him and on people who are floating in the sky. With the addition of the combat shotgun, shotguns can now be used to kill people out of the sky much easier. The fast fire rate can be used to put out a constant stream of shotgun shots, which deal upwards of 50 damage if placed correctly. After getting landed on, Tifu is now forced to drop from height. He plays on the edge of the zone to evaluate which person he can find a strong shot on to kill. Despite not winning the game, Tifu shows how you can take high ground by scouting who has it during rotates. This guy makes really good use of 90s to quickly take high ground and rack up multiple kills from it. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, this is Keith Allen. Hey, and stay tuned for more videos coming soon.